the currently existing life forms are not even the snowflake on the tip of the iceberg of possible life forms. Many more things could exist in nature than there currently are. So if you just take that approach, then nature appears in a radically different light. It's suddenly this field of possibility organized in mechanical processes and technologies that you as engineer could enter, could participate in, and could produce organisms that currently don't exist in nature, but that easily could exist in nature. And you look at the 20th century, their technology and industry was sort of the anti-nature. You say, wow, it might have been a misunderstanding of technology. The problem is not less or more technology. The problem is the terms in which it was built was unfortunate, it was a misunderstanding, so to speak. So that, that strikes me as one extremely powerful tool for thinking about climate change, replacing technologies by biology, so to speak, or with biologies. And I think platform capitalism is a, a really very interesting phenomenon. Um, to some degree, the entire history of capitalism has either revolved around resource extraction or industrial manufacturing. And platform manufacturing in that sense that it revolves ultimately around the invention and production or generation of big data. Now you have platform capitalism, which actually might mark the end of the concept of society as a meaningful concept because Platform capitalism gives rise to networks. It's all about networks and network effects. Societies don't generate data, networks generate data. So, of course, no one is dropping the term society now and is, you know, stopping talking about this. The realities in which we live, of course, are very much shaped by society. But unless one recognizes that, you know, we seem to live through a shift in time or through a big shift, our time is defined by it. And we cannot continue to use the term society as if it were the most plausible, absolute, given concept that will help us solve any problems if it is not suited to understand the new realities we live in. More specifically, that's true for the focus on human rights, something that I have thought about a little bit, partly because of my prior work in the global health sector, where health as a human rights was, was a big topic. But um, I had never really systematically thought about it with respect to AI, and the idea is that, yes, human rights are an extremely powerful, both moral and legal framework that can help us regulate not only AI, but also the networks that AI gives rise to. By and large, human rights were invented after the Second World War, and the concept of the human that is at stake or that is threatened, that is sort of built into AI, and the threat to the human, that, uh, sorry, that is built into human rights, and the threat to the human that is built into human rights, reflect a world that is no longer prime, is no longer ours, so to speak. So, that, so how would one have to rethink human rights in that context? So the changes that AI brings about to actually really make it a powerful framework.